we'll put you in jail. Uh, and there are some other issues, uh, whether it's the Food and Drug Administration telling farmers what kind of milk they can produce or whatever, but the same kind of confrontation has been occurring in some of these places. That's right. The states the are Fed, really starting to push back against federal tyranny. And the feds are backing down. The feds have yet to call anybody on that. They have, even out at the uh, Bunkerville, uh, Nevada ranch, the Clive and Bundy ranch, when enough Americans gathered there, initially from around the ranch, but then from states around the country, the feds uh, said, never mind, and backed off. So, so far, they realize that their force, if it's met in a credible fashion by an armed citizenry, they're not going to be able to do anything. And let's be clear, chosen. this is open criminal power grab in the Bundy case, running off 300-plus other families that have been there since 1878 that had the grazing rights. doesn't matter if the media lied. They had some federal judge say he null and voids all that. Common law says that's a fraud. And they wanted to run off the last farmer to use it as an easement for Chinese solar panels. And they play all these games with, and it just, it, it was tyranny. People saw it and they didn't want to have a new bunker hill out in the middle of the desert with cowboys. That's not the optics they wanted. It shows that they know the American people are so fed up and so angry that if they have the shot heard around the world in the wrong optics, it's going to lead to their downfall. And I don't want to have a physical war, but at some point, Larry, we just can't be completely run over. Well, and so far, people have credibly told the feds, you better not. And the feds get the message, Ugh, that's what the Second Amendment's all about. And so at the moment, the Second Amendment is doing the job it was intended to do, telling the feds here and no farther. And I think that... Uh, to me, that says our country still has a pulse, and I'm delighted to see these kinds of things. Well, watching the news, and I, and I agree that's very positive news. I, I concur. I've seen that myself. But the bad news is clearly the propaganda is accelerating in TV, print, media, movies. There's a new anti-gun push. They've got this new angle, all these fake scientists coming out. Uh, trying to demonize the evidence that m more guns means less crime. That seems to be another assault. Obama's promised a bunch of other extrajudicial, under-the-table attacks. What's the bad news? Well, the bad news, of course, is if we don't push back on this, then Obama's likely to be able to pull something off. hes I'm convinced he's going to do everything he possibly conceivably can in his remaining months in office. We're going to see the full Obama and it's not going to be very pretty if uh, we all thought, I believe, that uh, we were watching a, a hard left socialist in action in his first years in office. Now that he doesn't have any elections to run again, probably ever in his life in the future, and his party isn't going to have to run with him on the ticket ever again either, they're going to be all in. And I think it's going to be a very desperate fight that we're engaged in uh, until January of 2017. And boy, if there's any tragedy, and tragedies happen in a country with 330 million people, if there is a tragedy, we know they're going to use it. We know they're going to try to blame all gun owners collectively that we're involved in it. We've got to be ready to fight that next wave. We've got to be ready. And that is the bottom line. It's just like those Minutemen in uh, Lexington, Massachusetts. We've got to be ready at a minute's notice to come to the defense of, as it was at uh, Clive and Bundy, or uh, be a, a milk producer in Elkhart County, Indiana. Could be anywhere where the government thinks they might have an advantage, the ability to pull it off. Maybe it's not a major media center, and somehow they can get away with it. One of the things that impressed me about our technology is that on that Bundy Ranch, which is about as far from anywhere as you can get, uh, there's certainly no Internet Wi-Fi out on that ranch. Somebody was able to set up equipment so that they actually had simulcasts of what were going on. And I think that and the fact that a TV station was able to use similar technology, uh, th that put enough light on the evil deeds of darkness that the feds were up to that they finally realized if we do something, it's going to be on live television and we probably can't get away with it. They got away with it a little bit at Waco, Ruby Ridge. This time they wouldn't have gotten away with it. They knew it. So 
Terry Reid comes out and calls the people involved domestic terrorists. I think they've jumped the shark. They've gone a bridge too far. I want to ask you about this tidbit of positive news. Coming to the military, as we know it's in Army Times, the last six, seven years saying the founders are bad, gun owners are bad, Christians are bad, the Tea Party's your new enemy, prepare for domestic war, here are armored vehicles, the local police, that for every police department that says we want to fight with the Tea Party, there's another 50 police departments that know the Tea Party's not their enemy. When the Democrats are represented by, you know, kill the police, Black Lives Matter groups, and I have seen a huge wake up in the military and the police the last few years to just a ridiculous level now. They really understand that there are people running Washington that really want to hurt this country and really want to hurt them. And I think the the programming they tried to give the police and military has blown up in their face. I would agree with that assessment uh, here in Washington. You have contact with a lot of different people in the government. And they tend to have that very same assessment. I've talked to people in other parts of the country, same uh, takeaway, that, yeah, there'll be a few that will be just following orders, but most of the rest uh, realize I didn't take an oath to uphold Barack Obama or whoever else is president. I took an oath to uphold the Constitution. And that's the big stumbling block for any wannabe tyrant that most of those that they employ with guns aren't going to do something that they knowingly have seen is unconstitutional. And I think Waco and other tragedies like that have brought greater clarity to the understanding that a lot of our men under arms under, have seen. And, and I believe they would bring that to the table if anybody in government really went so far as to try to uh, impose uh, some kind of military armed solution in this country. Just don't think it's going to take. You're absolutely right. I'm going to let you go here in just a moment. Go back to calls, gunowners.org. Larry Pratt, the head of Gun Owners of America, is our guest. I, I raised this earlier. I remember getting you on 20 years ago, getting you on 16, 17 years ago, and you wouldn't do it. But I guess it was about 10 years ago. I begged you on air probably for the 10th time. I said, Larry, look, you know the NRA board's getting filled with some really bad people. They're not defending the Second Amendment. They're not getting aggressive. Heston has left. He was doing a great job. But they've, they've gotten really soft since he, you know, left and then died. And I know Ted Nugent's in there. He's great. Can you get your hardcore group, you know, the second largest group in the country, no compromises, Ron Paul has said, the only group at the time that was holding stuff back by just, just, just a hair. I said, can you go after the NRA and, you know, really explain some of the history of times they've done bad stuff? to show their supporters that your real activism is in making sure this giant organization is truly in the fight. Because, you know, they're intimidating board members. They were doing all sorts of stuff behind the scenes. There's more than one way to skin a cat. They want our guns, folks, so they go after our representatives. And so you're the watchman on the wall, keeping them honest. You wrote a big article showing their good history and their bad history. You called for them to get hardcore. I don't remember the name of the article. Maybe you should remind me. And they really changed in the next three, four years to be in a pretty good organization now overall, uh, in my view, correct me if I'm wrong, but, but, but can you speak to that? Because I think the greatest accomplishment of gun owners is that in a gentlemanly way, you guys really kind of caused a positive coup uh, inside the NRA. Is that not accurate? Uh, there, I think there's some truth to that. And in any case, when they have a tendency any given time to go off the rails, Gun Owners has now gotten to the size that we can focus on the NRA itself as if they were just another politician, which sometimes they kind of behave like. And when they get enough heat from their own members, they behave just like another politician. And they come around to what it is that folks are asking them to do. Case in point was post Sandy Hook. Uh, the NRA was supporting an expansion of the background check, which is really nothing more than the uh, enabling the government to have a registration list of all gun owners. And they did a 180 on that when we asked our members to email and telephone a guy at the NRA. His phone must have turned to green smoke because a week after we started that campaign, they said, no, nope, we're against the uh, Toomey Mansion bill. We're against the expansion of the background check. Of course, they wrote the initial background check. But they backed off because they felt the heat. And like old Senator Dirksen was fond of saying, 
When I feel the heat, I see the light. What would you say about their overall composition now? Am I accurate in saying they're better than they were 10 years ago? Oh, definitely. There's much more an awareness that they are a Second Amendment organization. They continue to provide wonderful services for target shooting and all those kinds of shooting sports. But they understand that all that goes away if they don't defend the Second Amendment. And the Second Amendment requires an adversarial relationship with the federal government. The Second Amendment says, federal government, you can go here and no farther. And if you try, then the Second Amendment comes into play. Uh, uh, to put it a little bit more crudely, we'll point our guns at you if you try to act tyrannically. And that that's in the Declaration of Independence, in the Constitution, in the Bill of Rights. The war started over them coming to take the guns. It doesn't matter how many quack professors they pay from Bloomberg to write books claiming it wasn't about guns. It was all about self-defense. It's always about self-defense. It's always about being free. And to look at the NRA doing a lot better job today, we're finally on the offensive. We're not compromising. Uh, people understand, oh, I can't give in to you because you never give in. We're not really compromising. They were always pushing us, pushing us, pushing us. And now, as Democratic Party websites have admitted and news articles, radical groups like gun owners, the small extreme fringe, uh, in, in their words, is driving the NRA and driving Republican politics. And what do we do about them? Well, the truth is we're not radical. This is what America is. It's what it's founded on. Our forebears had to fight the biggest empire in the world that no one had ever defeated to have these rights, folks. It was paid for in buckets and buckets and buckets of blood and guts. And America isn't perfect, but compared to other nations, it's incredible. And I'm so proud of America, and I'm so proud of Larry Pratt and all the gun owners members. Everybody who isn't a member should go join today. If you're not a member, at least sign up for the free alerts. Because, folks, we have been on a razor's edge of losing this battle so many times. And Larry Pratt and his folks up on the hill every day have turned the tide. And so I don't do this with hardly any other guest. But I'm telling you, if you don't get behind Larry Pratt, Gun Owners of America, you are actually working for the enemy. It comes down to that. Larry Pratt, closing comment. Well, Alex, I want to thank you very much for that kind of an endorsement because that, that really means a lot. And I think if people will just realize that, yeah, there are only one voice and maybe it's only one email that's going to go to their one congressman, but when they're working with thousands of other people doing the same thing, that's what turns these big issues around our way. We have won and we can win. It just requires people putting their shoulder uh, to the oar, and you get enough shoulders on that oar, and it moves. Incredible. Well, thank you so much, Larry Pratt. We'll talk to you soon. Good to be with you. Thanks for having me on, Alex. You bet. I'm going to be honest. i got a little tear in my eye there because you realize we're being enslaved. We're losing everything. They're debasing our currency. Our borders are gone. There is a plan to bring us into a one-world oppressive government. But the one thing that is growing is the people's resistance. And the polls show it. We're defeating the abortion people. We're defeating the gun grabbers. And we're in a serious battle. They're having some victories. But overall, we are growing. We're having more victories than them. That's why they're fighting so hard. The enemy is in a death struggle right now with us. we got them down. We're just, by sheer will, just crushing them into the stone. they got all their weapons, all their propaganda. It doesn't matter. Sheer will will move through the enemy and is absolutely unstoppable. But you've got to set your will against them, and you've got to admit these people are the scum of the earth. they got all their own bodyguards. They don't want you to be able to protect yourself. They are filth. They want to prey on you and your family at the end of the day. I didn't plug anything hardly today, earlier or now. Infowarslife.com, Infowarsstore.com. we got the great uh, supplements, a lot of them back in stock, like Knockout. A great sleep aid, all natural, just incredible. Uh, we got more brain force back in. Deep Cleanse is going to sell out soon. Infowarslife.com. And by the way, we're doing a 28-hour live broadcast that kicks off at 11 a.m. tomorrow. I was almost late getting back in the studio just now. I was just in that one-minute break or 70-second break as the hour ended, planning some of the amazing guests and the stuff we got coming up tomorrow. One of my biggest failures is also one of our greatest successes. I plan big stuff. We do big stuff. Our crew does a great job. But sometimes I bite off not more than I can chew. Let's just say we don't chew it very well. 
Uh, I, I, I should have been for like a week or two telling you the huge lineup.